My name is Red Wolf, and I am from the Ministry of Dog. <coughs> My mother, the human being, calls me Keegan. The name Keegan means small, but fiery. But small is just a mindset. I'm not so small to a bunny or a squirrel. I might be canine to you, but on the inside, I am Wolf. So, I call myself Red Wolf. My body is Border Collie, but my heart is Wolf. My mother says that I am actually kind of a nerd dog, but I know who I really am. I am Red Wolf. My mother, the human being, says that before I was born, I didn't get all my coloring because I squirmed too much when they were doing the painting and they missed a few splashes. She says that I am hypoactive. I don't care because a wolf on the inside doesn't need to be a certain color on the outside. When I was born, I was missing a part of my ear. The dog doctor said that my canine mom may have eaten a bit of my ear off after she gave birth to me. I mean, what kind of mom does that? I'm glad my human mother doesn't do things like that to me. Maybe that's why I don't like strange new dogs. When I was almost three months old, I had a lot of pain in my mouth, and I was rushed to the dog doctor with swollen lymph nodes. Finally, after a lot of pain and visits to dog doctors, I had my baby teeth removed. They were infected because my adult teeth were in the wrong place and they were sort of stuck. I also had a surgery so my teeth would fit inside my mouth better. This was all before I was four months old. I was in puppy classes before my mother, the human being, knew that my teeth were hurting. I wasn't friendly to the other puppies. Since then, I've never liked strange dogs. Not until I get used to them. I usually don't like new dogs or strange human beings inside my space bubble. It's just the way I am. And even after my surgery, my tongue still doesn't always fit inside my mouth. Sometimes I would have pain in my ear. I spent a lot of time at the dog doctor. And sometimes they didn't know what was wrong with me. And I also decided I don't like to be alone. I get very stressed and I will bark and pace and even hurt myself. I have broken open crates with my teeth and my body because I start to panic. So my mother doesn't leave me alone. Because that's not all. When I get really upset or anxious, I will sometimes have a seizure. The first time it happened was when I was three years old. My mother didn't see me because I was behind some trees. I could sort of hear her calling me, but my body was froze. So when she saw me, I was kind of wonky, and she knew I had collapsed. Then, a couple of months later, I collapsed again, and that's when I shed my body. My mother had been playing fetch with us in our field, and I ran to the pond. I run very fast, so it took about a minute for my mother to catch up. Well. When I got to the pond, I felt wonky, and I fell into the water. My head went right down under the water, and I couldn't move it. When my mother got to me, I was still seething, and then I went limp. I let my body go. From outside my body, I watched my mother trudge through the mud. You see, that's what a mother really is. Someone who would trudge through the thick mud to save their dog. Then she swam into the pond. It was pretty deep and cold, and her feet didn't touch the bottom. She got hold of my lifeless body, got to shore, and emptied my lungs. Then she laid me down on my right side. I looked pretty weird. My tongue was blue and limp, and my eyes were lifeless, staring into nothing. I heard my lungs let out kind of a weird moan. I really did seem to have shed my body for good. Then, she put her hands around my muzzle and blew air inside me. 
there was a thing called CPR that she couldn't really remember. So she just kept blowing in the air. I don't know how long it was. A few minutes, maybe. Then, bam, there I was, back in my Border Collie body. I thought I was okay at first. I even asked my mother to play ball with me, but I actually felt pretty cold. My mother wrapped me up and got me to the dog doctor. I started to have some trouble breathing and I spit up some blood. I spent a lot of time in the dog doctor over the next few days and my mother looked pretty worried. The dog doctor said I had aspiration pneumonia because the pond water had filled my lungs. But eventually, I recovered. I still caused my mother a lot of trudging, not just in the mud parts of the pond, but in all aspects of my murky life. I know she loves me, though, because she breathes me back to life. Even though she says I am a dog nerd and a pain in her bum. I still have occasional seizures, but I've gone sometimes a year and a half without one. My puppy problems affected how my brain works, so I'm just not like the other normal dogs. My mother says that I am special, but I am not sure if that is a good thing. I still get worried about lots of things, but my mother pretty much revolves her life around me. I like it that way. I don't really think she needs a life outside of me. Anyway, I'm telling you this story to introduce myself. There are lots of things a vertical species doesn't understand about the dog population, and that can be very frustrating. My goal is to help you to understand basic dog talk and improve your relationship with the dog population. I offer my wisdom to the verticals in hope of making them a better species. Please subscribe for weekly dogmatizing.